Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're creating this beautiful image here. Uh, to get to this final result, I am using Photoshop and Topaz Mask AI. So we're going to use a lot of Mask AI to make selections and things like that, to blur backgrounds and do some really cool things, colorize parts of the image. It's going to be fun. Um, also, I'm linking this image in the description below. In case you want to uh, follow along with me, you can go ahead and download it. It's a great way of learning. And Topaz has just released a major update for Mask AI. It's been, uh, it's been released for a few days now. And it's been on sale now from $99.99 down to $79.99. Today is Friday, May 1st. Okay. And it runs on sale until uh, Monday, May 4th. So you can get it today on sale till Monday, and this is year 2020, so you'll save that extra money, so it's $79.99, but if you click my affiliate link in the description below, you'll save an additional 15% when you go to check out and use my coupon code, David Kelly, and that helps me out. It helps my YouTube channel out. I get a small commission for it, and I really appreciate it, but I love Mask AI. It's a great piece of software, so hey, without any further ado, let's get masking. The first thing I want to do is give this background a little extra blur. I just want to soften it up a little bit. I really like this image right here. I think it's really cool looking. So I want to blur that background just a little bit more. I think it'll look a little bit nicer. Now I'm ch I've changed things up in my workflow a little bit. I'm not going to duplicate my background layer. And this is only uh, when I'm using Mask AI, this workflow change, okay? So I'm not duplicating the background layer, and I'll show you what, what I've changed and why I'm doing it this way. So I'm coming up here to Filter, and I'm going to launch uh, Mask AI. And that'll launch Mask AI for us. And once we're in Mask AI, I'll show you what I changed. Uh, up here under Topaz Mask AI, give that a click and click on Preferences. Originally, I had uh, Save to Layer Mask under Photoshop here checked, and I still have that checked. But I also checked this auto create layer, check that on. And the reason I did that was because um, it just saves you a little bit of time. You don't have to, you know, duplicate that background layer or any layer that you're working on, which is nice. It's a little bit of time saver. The other thing I did was I changed my tri map opacity. I think it defaults at like 40 percent i have changed it to 20 it's just a little bit easier to see sometimes i think it's a little too opaque i think that's the right term so i like it at 20 percent. so that's something i changed there too all right i'm going to click close here and now we're just going to soften the background a little bit uh i'm going to show you how you can do it in inside of mask ai and i'm also going to show you how to do it in photoshop so whichever way you prefer you can do it either way all right so the first thing we have to do is make our tri map. Okay, so remember blue is your compute. This is the brush it defaults with. With I'm using the left bracket key to make the brush a little smaller, and I'm just going to draw a compute line around the area that I want to keep on the edge of the area that I want to keep, just like so. I think I'm going to come across there, this area right in here. And then all I have to do is get a red bucket here and give this a click. That's the area I want to uh, cut. And this is the area that I want to keep the green area right here. So now we're going to just uh, tap the uh, compute mask. Now you have two mask modes, AI or contrast. AI for a little more difficult masks and uh, contrast for simple masks. AI is the artificial intelligence. So I'm going to go ahead and click compute and let that uh, do its thing. And it's pretty quick actually. All right, so there we go. The next thing I'm going to do is come to background, click on background, and click on blur. I really love this feature inside of Mask AI, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, all we have to do is we can adjust the strength here. I don't want it to be blurred that much. Let me shut this off so you can see. Here's the original. I just want it a little bit softer. I think that'll just look a little, just a little nicer. I think something like that. Now, we can come in, zoom into our mask here, and... Take a look and see if it missed anything here. So look around our edges and everything. Let's uh, shut this tri map off here so we can examine. Okay. See, so here's some uh, leaves right here. I don't necessarily need those leaves in. And so I'm going to leave those out, actually. Here's a leaf that it missed right here. So I use uh, shortcut keys Q for uh, 
uh, compute W for keep and E for cut. So I'm going to use my W key to get my uh, keep brush on. And what I'm going to do is just come here and paint on this particular leaf right here. And it'll magically just fill that in, just like so. And that looks pretty good. Now I'll examine these leaves here. Actually, I think everything looks good, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so let me zoom back out here. Now, what we would do next is, uh, oh, before I say that, we also have all these adjustments here. If you wanted to darken the background, you can darken it, or you can lighten it up if you wanted to lighten it up, depending on what you want. But I think it looks good. I'm just going to double-click exposure. I'm just leaving that the way it is. I just want a little softer background. So see the image on the left? That's the original. The image on the right is with a little softer background. But I just think it just looks a little nicer in my humble opinion. Now all we have to do is click Apply. Now we're going to have options here. If we want to send this out with the mask already blurred from Mask AI, click Composite, it'll send it out as a composited image. But if we want to do the blurring inside of um, Photoshop, we would uh, click on Transparent, and that's what I'm going to do, and it sends it in with a layer mask here. Now you'll notice back in Photoshop, nothing has changed. My background is not blurred because remember I sent it out of Mask AI as a, just as a layer mask. And here's my layer mask. And if I hold the Option key down or the Alt key and click on the layer mask, you can see the actual layer mask itself, okay? So um, to get a blurred background, what I want to do is I need to blur this background layer, but I don't want to blur the actual black background layer. So here's where I will duplicate the background layer, Command-J to duplicate it. So I want to uh, blur this uh, background layer copy too. So I'll just come up here to filter and find some blur filter here. I'm just going to use a simple Gaussian blur to do that. Okay, and just like that, you know, let's click the preview. You can see the before and after. Okay, so there it is. So this is the way you would do it in uh, Photoshop. And then you can adjust this. You can give it more blur. You can give it less blur depending what you like. So you got either way of doing it. I much prefer myself to do it this way. And the reason I do it this way is in case, you know, there might have been an issue with a mask, like it missed an area. I could come, let me just click OK to accept this. Like, for instance, I could zoom in here. And if there was any issues here, if I said, oh, it missed a little spot right here, I can click on this layer mask here, get my brush. I'm just going to type the B key, make my brush smaller, obviously. I have tons of, you know, the hardness is at zero, so it's, it's feathered uh, with, super, with a super amount of feathering. Uh, and then I would just paint with black paint if it missed a little spot right here. Uh, right now it is painting with black paint. And I could just paint right like so. Actually, it's on 20%. Let's type zero to get that to 100%. And there's 100%. See, if I paint over that like that, I'd eliminate it. I'm just going to type uh, Command or Control Z to get that back. But see, I can come here and fix my mask up if it missed anything. So that's why I like to work with Photoshop that way, because it gives you a little uh, chance to fix things up if you had a little mistake. If I blurred it in Mask AI and brought it back into Photoshop and found I had a mistake, I'd have to redo the mask again. Now let's have a little fun. Say, what if we wanted to change the color of these flowers right here? I like the overall sepia look of this image. It has a very nostalgic look to it. But what if I wanted to add a little bit of a nice soft pink to these flowers right here? Okay, uh, so I'll show you how I would use Mask AI in Photoshop to do that. Now, I need to pull all this together here. So I need to stamp all these layers together. And, I, and the way I do that is I use a shortcut of Shift, Option, or Alt, Command, and E, and that just pulls us all up onto one layer, okay? And now what I'm going to do is come up to Filter and come to Topaz Labs, and we're going to uh, launch Mask AI again. And then we're going to uh, cut those flowers out, and then we'll bring those back into Photoshop, and I'll show you how we will uh, colorize those flowers. Let's go ahead and draw around these flowers with our Compute Brush. Like so. And this guy right here, he's a little blurry blob right here, but that's okay. And now let's get our red paint bucket and just give that a click and voila. Now I'm going to stay in the AI mode because I would assume this is a pretty complicated mask to cut out. So I'm going to uh, click on Compute Mask 
and see what kind of results we get here. All right. Now, what I like to do is shut my tri map off here so I have something to really compare to. Okay, so now we're going to zoom way in here. I'm going to uh, hold the space bar down. My hand tool com comes up. I'm just going to look at these flowers here and see if there's any changes I need to make. I'm going to get my uh, cut brush. That's the E is the shortcut key for that. Make my brush a little smaller with my left bracket key. Here's a little spot right here that needs to go away. Okay, and it missed a little spot right there. Let me go to the green brush, which is W. And just give this a little brush right there. And see that pulls that back in. And let's come across here too. Looks like it missed a little, yeah, it missed a little spot right in there. And let's go right here. Paint across there. Okay, and here's a little bit of this wood here. So we'll get a uh, cut brush, E. Get to learn those shortcut keys because that's really going to help you. And just paint right across there like so. And it cuts that out. And it looks like it missed a little spot right up in here. But don't forget, I can fix things in Photoshop if, uh, if need be because I'm going to output that. I'll put this as a layer mask. So I'm going to get my W key and just paint right there. And... Fixes that right up, and right here, I want to make sure that little area right there doesn't need to be there, so I'll get my E for my cut, and just paint a little bit right there, and let that fix itself up. And a little spot here it missed. And I think that's going to be okay, actually. I think we're going to be okay here. I'm just going to go ahead and click Apply. And be brave and send that right back into Photoshop. And there it is with my layer mask. Now, check this out. What I'm going to do is come to my adjustment layers. And let's get a uh, hue saturation adjustment layer. And what we need to do here, very importantly, is clip this layer. See this little icon right here? Give that a click. That means it's clipping. This layer is clipped to the layer below it, meaning whatever I do with this hue saturation will only affect these flowers pretty cool right so I'm gonna click on colorize and you notice my flowers are colorized and they're pink and that's actually the color I want so you know I can make them more pink or less pink I want to keep them kind of subtle so maybe right around like that now we can zoom in here and let's just take a look here and see how things look and if it missed the little area here's what I like I can come and click on my layer mask here and say like if it missed a little spot right there it might be flower so I can make sure I'm on my layer mask uh, type B to get my brush tool up I'm gonna put my opacity about like 30 percent so I'm typing the three key and I want to paint with white paint right now it's on black paint so I'm gonna type the X key and I'm just gonna paint right here see that this is why I like to work in Photoshop because I can fix little spots like this very quick and easy and I'm done Simple. No fuss. No muss. It's easy to do. But isn't that nice? Let's option click the background layer. Here's the before and here's the after. Soft background, pink flowers. I think it looks better already in my opinion. I didn't show you this. Let's come back up to the hue saturation layer here. Uh, I am in colorize, right? And the color it was on was the color I wanted, so that was cool. But I didn't show you. You can take this hue slider and change those to any color you want. You want blue flowers, you know, you want purple, you know, whatever color you want of flowers you can have. So again, I want I want these pink color flowers right here. So I'm just gonna leave it where it was. But I I wanted to point that out. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I wish these scissors were a little more silvery, not so sepia here. So I'd like to take some of this um the sepia tone off of this. And I'm going to use another uh, hue saturation colorized layer, but first I'm going to uh, mask it out. So I'm going to use mask AI again. So again, I need to pull all this together here because I got to send a pixel layer into mask AI. Very important. And that is shift option command E or shift alt command E if you're on a PC just to stamp those layers together. And now we're going to come back up to uh, filter, Topaz Labs, 
the wonderful Mask AI. I'm getting to really love this uh, piece of software, actually. I'm using it all the time now. All right, so now we're back into Mask AI, and now we're going to cut these scissors out. This is going to be a little tricky because it's kind of blurry. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so we can, I don't know, be a little easier to work with, I guess. So I'm going to make my brush a little smaller with my left bracket key. I'm just going to paint around here with the compute paint, paint around the edge, make this brush a little smaller, come up through here, over to here, on the edge here, see what we can do. This is going to be tricky. This is tough for any program to do, but it'll be easy to fix it. Okay something like so and let's get our red bucket tool click outside of here let's go ahead and click on compute mask leaving it in the ai mode and see what we get here all right there it is okay so now let's shut off our tri map so we can really take a look here and see what we're doing okay so it got confused in here it didn't know what to do so I'm going to start out with a cut brush. I'm just going to paint right in here like so. See what it does. Okay. It did that. I'm going to come in here and paint in here. Okay, it did that. Now I'm going to change it to a keep brush and make it maybe slightly smaller. And just paint right around here. See what happens. Okay, more like it. Paint right down through here. Okay, cool. Let's paint down here, around here. I'm just going to take it a step at a time. Come around here. Okay, it's looking good. Artificial intelligence, do your thing. I think it's doing pretty good. Maybe right here. Okay, and little little issues in Photoshop I can fix very simply. Okay, let me get my cut brush that's E and just paint right along this edge here. I just want to see what happens here. Okay, let's paint just right around here. Okay, paint right up through here. All right. Let's just paint right through here. And yeah, it's looking good. And I think I'll just paint right across here. And I think, I think, darn it, that we're pretty good. Maybe uh, get my W brush one more time. Because you know me, guys. I really go overboard. Okay, that's good enough. I can fix that in Photoshop with no problem at all. Even this little piece here, that's an easy fix in Photoshop, but I'll fix it here. And E is the shortcut right there. Bang. Okay, there's a little spot right there. Let's get rid of it. Okay, I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead and say apply. That'll take us right back into Photoshop. If you remember, I changed my preferences in uh, Mask AI to uh, uh, give me, you know, create a duplicate layer. So that's why it duplicated the layer here. So this layer I really don't need. So I can just go ahead and uh, click on it and click the trash can and get rid of that layer. So right now I'm coming up to this layer right here with the scissors uh, mask right here. And if I option click the mask, you can see the mask, okay? That Mask AI made. And now I'm going to come and get another hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to put it on colorize. And remember, I have to clip it. You may wonder, hey, David, did the whole thing. Click the clip and then watch what happens. Now I got pink scissors. I don't want pink scissors. What I want is uh, more of like a blue type scissor. Uh, I'm thinking like gray, steely blue. So maybe a color something like that. And then I'll just take the saturation and pull the saturation back a good bit. Okay, maybe somewhere right, right around here. 
And then what I'm going to do is take this opacity. I want to add a little bit of that sepia over top of it just to make it look like it's not it, like it belongs in the image. Okay, so I'm going to take this opacity and start to pull it back like so. You see that? Because before it, used, it looked like that. I didn't like that. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. It's got to be fixed. Okay, so there we go. So then I just do this. And I think around like uh, maybe maybe around 62% I think looks pretty good. Now we can take a zoom in to see if I need to fix anything. And if I need to fix anything, I think everything looks pretty good. Um, maybe just right on this edge right here. Let me see what I can do. Let's go to the um, this layer mask right here. Click it, and what color of paint do I want? I don't know. Let's see here. I'm going to try white paint. I'm just going to take a little test here. Because I'm at 30%. Yeah, I'm just going to let that come out. And I'm very, I have a very soft brush. So as you can see that, you know, I can come up here and just soften that edge a little bit. Let that blur in a little bit. And that's what I mean by the expression that we all so much love. We can fix it in Photoshop. This is why I like to work in Photoshop, because little things like this. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Here's a new feature in Photoshop. If you hold the Option key down and click on the background layer, it'll bring you to full size. That's pretty cool. It's a nice little tip. Now let's Option or Alt click the background layer. Here's the before. A nice image, uh, sepia looking, and here's the after. Some colorized flowers, uh, the scissors just look better, and that little extra blur in the background. So again, here's the before, and here's the after. So, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Well, there it is. I think this came out really nice. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm linking this image in the description below in case you want to download it and uh, follow along with this tutorial with me. That's a great way of learning. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, thanks each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing.